We had trespassers. They've been coming almost every night. We haven't been getting sleep. They just traipsed through, took out the wiring. Cows. <laughs> Wanna be putting up the fence? I really need to finish off this project, especially if I take the T-posts from around the solar panels, I need to keep the cows out. Hopefully when I take that down, we don't leave us too exposed. All right, right around here is where I put up the temporary fencing for the solar panels, but I need these T-posts. So I'm gonna unhook the clips Take off the barbed wire. I could still use the barbed wire. We'll need that for the gate. And uh, it's gonna be a chore getting this all undone. But we shouldn't need it anymore with the outside perimeter fully done. We shouldn't have to worry about cows taking a break underneath these things. <laughs> all right, since I'm out here taking down this temporary fence, I just wanted to show you a quick way to possibly remove fence stays if you have them in there. Makes the job a whole lot simpler. What I did was I put an Allen wrench inside my electric drill. We'll just loop it in there. Comes out super easy. Nice. You know, the crazy thing is, I put up a number of fences. This is the first time I've taken one down. Kind of annoying. Like, what do you do with all this barbed wire? Just coming loose, getting caught on everything. Maybe I should have watched a YouTube video before doing this, huh? I'll tell you, the idea of barbed wire is pretty simple. But man, it's super effective. I think this stuff was developed in hell. So all the barbed wire is taken down, and that was a challenge. The barbed wire gets stuck everywhere. Gloves, sleeves, itself. I've just taken it out there and I've created a deadly field of barbed wire. Well, it may not be that much more deadly than it already is out here considering of all the thorny bushes we have out here. The barbed wire should be right at home in this hellish landscape. All right, now is the opportunity Yeah, done? <laughs> what? All right, now's the opportunity I have to use my T-post puller. Gonna go over here, I'm gonna try this out. Let's see how this thing works. So it looks pretty simple. Basically, you hold your handle horizontally, place it over your T-post so that it's in between the notches, and then you pull. Oh. So easy. Jessica's gonna demonstrate all blurry like. She's gonna demonstrate how easy it is. This is the first time doing it. She's never done it before. Look at this, she's a natural already. Super easy. <laughs> Is that it though? Easiest thing in the world. If you make it that way. Look at that. First time. Knocks it out. Well, I didn't intend for this to be a rainy day vlog, but here we are. So now that I got those T-posts out from around the solar panels, put them in the truck, I was short on uh, T-posts, so I had to go get some more. I got those in the truck. Now I'm out here again, southeast side of the property, and gonna finish laying out these T-posts, then time to get to pounding. Now I'm doing it here in the chill of the morning. It's a little drizzly, that's okay. Work's gotta get done, you know what I mean? Now that I got these posts laid out, I'm gonna grab the post pounder, start getting these into the ground. Sun's peeking out a little bit, so that's not bad.
kind of surreal uh, bringing the truck out here, but I mean, I don't have an ATV or anything like that. It's kind of weird thinking like, oh, I gotta drive the truck from one part of the property to another, but it makes a world of difference. I could just load up the bed with all the equipment and tools I need and then psh, head off. Never let it be said, I didn't try and put out some helpful information while I do these videos. Every now and then, I like to throw out something a little helpful. If anyone's questioning why the ribs are pointing this way, which is away from our property, since we're trying to keep animals out of our land, we're facing them away from our land. Think of it like a guard. These T-posts are standing guard. You want the teeth, you want the mean part facing away. Granted, they do nothing to keep the animals out. It's the barbed wire that, <laughs> that does that. Oh, sorry, I thought this would be helpful, but maybe it's not. I don't know if you've personally ever put in T-posts, but it is tough work. Actually, putting in these T-posts have been way easier than putting them in on the west side. Those T-posts were a beast. These are going in much easier, but it is still a lot of work doing it with the T-post pounder. And I'm wearing gloves. The skin's still tearing off my finger. Ah, it's all right though. I'll just keep on pounding these posts, wrap it up afterwards. You know how it is. The work's got to get done. So with that T-post in, they're done. That's 105 T-posts going from one side of the property to this side. Man, that was no joke. But I got it done pretty quickly. If I was able to do that on that west side, I wouldn't have such a horrible uh, memories about fencing. Man, after I did that side, I'm like, man, I don't want to do fencing ever again. But then, you know, I had to do the south side. This just, just went so much easier. I can't even begin to describe the difference. So you would think I'm ready for barbed wire, but I'm not. So now that I got these uh, T-posts in, I can clearly see the area where I'm gonna have to run the barbed wire across. And I'll probably have to do some more clearing just to get some of these small shrubs out of my way. That way I can cleanly pull the uh, barbed wire from one side to the other and not worry about it getting tangled too much because the barbed wire will easily get tangled. And these thorny bushes with the barbed wire, oh, you're talking about a match made in hell. So just kind of looking at the footage, man, this is looking really good. If I may say so myself. <laughs> I mean, this is the second fence that I've ever worked on. I can't believe it. Looks pretty straight to me. Maybe there's a couple toward the beginning that uh, are a little staggered, but not too bad. Of course, you can see the, uh, the middle post over here. Everything is just looking mighty nice. I'm happy with it anyway. I was a little worried about this side because this side is a side where there could be a potential neighbor. And so I really want that kind of to be straight within our boundaries. That way I don't have to mess with anything later on. All right, just like with any project, once the tough stuff is done, then comes the fun part. This is the fun part right here, messing with the barbed wire, right? Maybe not. All depends on your perspective. I'm just gonna follow along with what I've done here. As far as the barbed wire spacing goes, I'll just attach the barbed wire pretty close to where I've got this, run it along, then attach it to the middle post. Uh-oh, look who's out to visit. <laughs> Shouldn't come out here without your armor on. So if you find yourself doing fencing like this, just one little tip I like to give is, I like to work from top to bottom. That way when you're stringing the uh, future lines across, they're not getting tangled up with the lower ones. I just put a few around here just to keep that from moving. Now to take this bundle all the way down to the middle. Ugh. Barbed wire, man. You got those uh, big old rolls and those things are heavy. I mean, it's got over 1300 feet of wire wrapped around that bundle. And man, when you start with that thing, it is heavy. But I got a little handle on there that makes it uh, just roll out that much easier. The farther you go with it, the easier it gets. So you want to keep moving. <laughs> That ain't no joke. <laughs> so I got my wire and the, the stretcher here. Right. 
So I did get a second bite on this barbed wire. I want it a little tighter. You don't want the barbed wire too tight. You don't want it too loose and you don't want it too tight. If it's too tight, it'll snap on you. So uh, I did get a second bite because it just it's just hanging down a little too loose for me. But I think we got it now. I think I usually do this with like a couple people, but I don't have a couple people today. So Jim's gonna have to get it done himself. So I put that one in just to kind of hold the barbed wire in place. I'll put another one over here to hopefully keep that tension. This isn't gonna be the prettiest one, but I usually like to have two people out here. Now I've got all the staples in place and I'm secure at both ends. Now I'm gonna go with the clips along the barbed wire. So, put in my clips. Very easy to do. I use one side to hook it. And then with this other side, I just twist it around. Give it a little twist. Now it ain't going anywhere. So you can see my clip, I hook it with this end. Get my tool in here, twist with that. Let's get them attached. Honestly, once I run the barbed wire from one side to the other, attaching these clips is kind of like a peaceful activity. So we're making good progress out here. I brought Jess out here to help speed along the process. I figure while I'm running wire, she can be clipping it up. She's making good progress heading down that way. I'm about to go start up the third strand. I'm gonna do five total. Five total should make this very secure. Maybe when the staple pops out of the post after you release the tension, maybe that's a little too tight. You gotta be careful with that. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. I've been trying to, I've been trying to really get it snug. It's like a fine line between too much tension and too little. <laughs> when it pops out of the post, that's when you know there's too much. Well, the rain started up while I'm uh, still working on this fence, but nothing to it but to do it. Just gotta put the hood up, the head down, and keep on pushing it forward. I'm nearing the finish line. Woo! <laughs> gotta get it done, gotta get it done today. Oh, pressure's on, pressure's on. I don't wanna come back out here another day. I got things to do. I can't be spending all my time doing fences. But this is a super important project. Like if we wanna get started on our off-grid house build, this has got to be done because those cows could come in, trample things, wreck things. We can't have it. This fence is probably good to go, but I got to get that final strand in because not only will this help keep out the cows, but maybe it'll deter javelina a little bit. Javelina's an issue too. The more we can get protected on the sides, the better it's gonna be for us. Well, that's it. Last of the clips are done. This fence is looking mighty nice. I'm pretty proud of the, what we did here. This is the second fence we put up. Third, if you count the temporary fence by the panels. But man, we did so much better this time around than the last time. But this fence, woo, professional looking. I got it done just before nightfall, but the job's done. Uh, we took care of it by ourselves, Jess and I. You know, if you're looking to take on big projects like this, sometimes you're afraid to jump in and just get it done. But you know what? Nothing to it but to do it. Just get in there, get it done, and you know, you might surprise yourself. If anything, it gives you a little bit more experience for the next time. You think I can make it under there? Otherwise, where do I get out? Try it. Oh. <laughs> 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 Let's get out of here. Just come on, we gotta get out of here. <laughs>